Hello friends and welcome back to the podcast. I'm going to be really fucking transparent. I've already recorded this fucking podcast, but I got interrupted so many times that I'm just like, ugh, I'm just going to redo it because it just, I feel like it's a, like a very like choppy episode otherwise. So we are redoing the episode. Anyway, so I'm currently in London. Um, for those of you that don't know, I had to come to London to get my visa put in my passport. Basically, I have an O1 visa, which allows me to live in America. Um, and I got my O1 visa last year. They swapped me from a B1, B2 to an O1. So I was able to stay in the country. But it, what it means is that you can't travel in and out of the country unless the visa is stamped in your passport. But because of COVID and me already being in the country, I couldn't leave and then come back in because at that point they weren't letting in non-resident, non-citizens to come back into the country. And also Australia's embassy was closed and like blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I've gone to London. I'm still here getting it done. My beautiful man has flown in this morning and it's Friday morning. Well, it's Friday afternoon now. And um, we are leaving on Sunday afternoon. So he flew over for a very quick trip to see me and for us to have a nice weekend together, which is very, very kind of him. Um, Anyway, and so here we are doing a podcast in London. I'm staying at the Edition and it is such a beautiful hotel. If you come to London, definitely stay at the London Edition. The service is amazing. The vibes are out of this world. It is just like so beautiful, so cozy, so extra, just all the vibes. Anyway, so today's episode, we are talking about a topic that came up with a friend of mine. How old is too old? To date. That doesn't mean how like you're too old to date. What that means is, is there an age where it is too old for you to date somebody like that? Now, this is obviously a mass generalization, but it's just a juicy kind of topic. We were going, we were like fully going on it. And um, I have some insights about it. So I want to share. So firstly is that what people... Oh, this is a hard topic to jump in, Joe, be honest, because <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong thing and like offend people. This is not about like, oh, like you're in this box. Like this is just possibly bringing some self-awareness to maybe your situation if you are going to be in this bracket. Now, it always is a red flag to me or raises an eyebrow when you when someone is dating a guy and I've done this, someone is dating a guy or you can also put this guy dating a girl if you're like, if men are listening to this. If someone is dating a guy, Let's say the guy is 40, 41. He's single. He hasn't really had any long relationships. Well, he's like late thirties, whatever. He hasn't really had any, any long relationships and he's like very much single and his behavior is also very single behavior, but he claims that he wants commitment. Red fucking flag, red fucking flag. The reality is that there are a lot of lazy people when they get older, Right. They are more tired. They are more lazy, especially if they're like not looking after themselves. Um, they are definitely more in that like settle down phase of their life. They've done the party and they've done the going out. They just don't have the energy for it. But the problem is that that energy is needed when you want to create polarity with someone. If you want a fucking amazing relationship, that's not going to happen if you guys are just in bed all the time. Well, that's not going to happen if you guys just stay home all the time. Like going out and doing things and being in different environments is important because it creates different energy for you and a different energy for you and your partner, which you then get to experience the two of you. It's so important to change up environments, to go on holidays, to go to different places, to do different things, because otherwise that is also a contributor to stagnancy in the relationship. Obviously, as you get older and you've dated a lot, you can be really fucking bored of doing that. So you don't want to do it anymore. But then the problem is good fucking luck in creating a fun relationship because you're going to end up with someone that's, someone that's really fucking boring or there could be a great woman, but she's like, I don't want this because it's not fun. Women want fun. Feminine is like fun, wild, carefree, like give me fucking entertainment. I want attention. I want to be wooed. I want us to go out. I want us, I want to be in different environments that are aesthetically pleasing. I want my senses to be ignited. A feminine, like a feminine woman, her senses are not ignited by staying home all the time. No, because there's no sensory stimulation and we are very sensual beings, as in we really need our senses to be ignited in order for us to feel like turned on by life and excited. And that excitement is obviously going to go into the relationship as well. So when it comes to the question of how old is too old to date, I'm kind of going to like go on some ex like experiences, like some stories. So 
I was into Loom and you guys might've seen that we were into Loom has breakfast with one of my friends and she was telling me about this guy that she met and like, oh my God, like five, like major vibes, really fucking sexy, so much chemistry. Like maybe this is the guy. She was saying a few things about their interactions. He missed a cutoff time to like get into a club or, di- or like dinner place they were at or whatever, like her and her friends, a few other things. It was very blase. And then she told me his age and I was like, uh, no, if this was a you know, late twenties, early thirties guy, I'd be like, whatever. But when a guy is being blase or when a guy is not fucking chasing and pursuing and claiming, and he's like in his forties, that to me is a huge red flag, huge red flag. Because the reality is that if a 40 year old man is single, most 40 year old people do not want to be single. Like majority of us want to be in an amazing relationship. Majority of us do not want to be single. We are wired for connection. We are wired for partnership. That is how we roll. Most 30 year olds don't want to be single. Most people don't really want to be single. We can go through phases and seasons where we really enjoy being single, like hundred percent. But most of us deep down want an amazing, fun partnership. We don't want a boring partnership. We want an amazing, fun partnership. So when you have these 40 year olds that are single and they are like saying one thing to you, but their actions are showing another it is a red flag, especially if you're like, there, there can be, in my opinion, too much of an age gap. And I'll talk about that in a second, especially if you're like in your mid to late twenties, you want to settle down, you want a serious relationship and you've got this 40 year old guy. And, you know, initially you think, oh my God, this is great. He's 40 years old. He knows how to treat me. This dating is going to be so easy. He knows how to date women. The sex is going to be great because he's fucking had 40 years of, it came out 40 years of sex, but let's say he started having sex when he was 20. He said 30s, 20 years of sex. I'm just going to say a generalization of started when he was 20. Um, he said 20 years of sex. Like this is going to be fantastic. And then you start dating him and that's not really the case. So initially you think, and you kind of can get fooled by thinking because of a certain age he's ready to settle down now because of you getting fooled by that what then happens is you can ignore serious red flags and unfortunately we can get very sucked in as women with the whole like daddy dynamic subdom is I'm going to do that episode on like subdom but I've talked about it in sex life the series that I did for you guys about sex life like the Netflix series and the podcast series I did on it subdom is something that like yes is in the bedroom but also very much in day-to-day and it's honestly just like a more hardcore version of polarity of like maybe like a sexier or kinkier version of polarity right so the whole daddy vibe is literally just you wanting to be protected cherished looked after and some people can have daddy issues and be into the daddy vibe or people have like dealt with daddy issues but are into the daddy vibe because it's like this this protective energy it's this like pursual energy it's this he's the boss he's leading he's deciding x y and z what can happen though is that if it's not the latter right of like a healthy daddy dynamic and it's the unhealthy daddy dynamic where basically it's based on his age you really can get caught not seeing the problems when they are there because your brain and your body is kind of getting sucked in and trapped by this, I'm, I feel protected and looked after because of his, his age, not because of his actions, but because of his age. And this is the question you want to ask yourself. And like, this is what I've said to myself before when I've dated, I've dated a 40 year, one year, 41 year old, I think I've dated before is, and I dated like older thirties. And again, I'm like, my brain, when I figure out things, I'm like, and this is why you're in your forties and single. And it can sound very judgmental. And I just like want to say, if you're, if you're really triggered by this, because you haven't had a serious relationship before or a recent serious relationship, and you're like unwantingly single in your, um, like forties and you're having like absolutely no luck, or you're facing the same problems over and over again, or you're in a pattern of like things lasting for like two months and then they die. Maybe it's you like, I know that can be really, really hard to hear, but maybe it is you. That is the most empowering question to ask yourself of maybe it's me. I asked myself this, this like last year, which gave me profound answers to a lot of things and how I had profound realizations and really dug into the behavior of dating, which is why I'm now doing it in the masterclass, the embodiment of dating and why I have a whole VIP section for it because I'm now like, 
I, I'm doing it now because I actually have fucking time. I haven't, I pushed, I, I had it in my calendar to do November last year, but I kept pushing it off because of like just timing with, with life things. And then the ski season happened, honestly, when the ski season, ha- season happens, everything else gets pushed off. It's not a priority lol. Um, but the, a really empowering question that you can ask yourself is what responsibility do I have in this? Because even if you think that you're great and you're the bee's knees and you are so deserving and so worthy, I'm not dishonoring, dis, um, disregarding any of that, but there could be some of your behavior separate to your worth, separate to your personality. There could be some of your behavior that is unsupportive to building a relationship or it's unattractive. Therefore, the person doesn't stick around. Very triggering to hear, but it honestly can be a real thing. When you realize your behavior that's causing it and you stop doing it, then when things aren't working out and there's not that like pattern anymore, but it's just like, oh, I don't feel the vibe with him X, Y, and Z. It's not about you then. It's like, okay, you don't feel the vibe with him. Like don't fucking settle. Let's wait for the, wait for the right guy. Like obviously I'm a hundred percent for that. So the question to sometimes ask yourself with, you know, if you're dating late thirties, early forties and your late twenties, or you're dating a 50 year old in your thirties or your early forties. And there's certain behavior is like, is this why he's 50 and single and he's never been married and there's no kids. And it wasn't, he didn't get divorced because they thought a love or anything like that. Like sometimes you need to ask, why is this person single? Not because you're necessarily looking for negative things, but sometimes you don't let yourself see the negative things. People have asked me that question before of like, this is going to sound kind of cocky. It's not meant to come off this way. I'm just trying to give an example of like, if somebody asks you like, why are you single? Like, because you're so amazing. And you can then ask yourself, yeah, why am I single? Like what's wrong with me? That's separate. That is simply, you're probably choosing to be single because you haven't met the right, right guy. That was me for a while. It was like, I would date these great guys, but it just wasn't my guy. Right. So it was like, okay, well, I'm not going to fucking continue with that because I know it's not my person. So why am I single again? Because that's not my person. So I'm not going to engage with that. Different to you needing to ask yourself in a, in a more self-reflective way of why are you single? Like, is there some self-responsibility that you need to take for certain behaviors that are causing this? So when you're looking at like the guys that you're dating and they are doing things where you're like, mm, it could be, well, this is why he's fucking this this age and single. So for example, last year I dated a 41 year old for a little bit, nothing long or anything. Met him through a mutual friend. Mutual friend was very much like, do not fucking hurt her. Like do not hurt her. He, you guys love a story. So he, um, got, we, we like met out at dinner with my friend. I just moved to New York. He, um, got my number through my friend and texted me the next day or something or two days later being like, Hey, it's so-and-so it was so nice to meet you. Blah, blah, blah. I'll take you out for dinner. So initially I'm like, Oh my God, this is great. Like, fuck yes. 40 delicious. Yum. He's going to be like wanting a committed relationship. He's going to know how to treat women. He's going to be so mature. He's got his shit together. He's 40. It's like, he's probably got his career together, a nice apartment. Like absolutely. Fuck yes. Well, no, we had a few really nice dates. The chemistry was there in the beginning. But then of course I got to see the behavior that, and it wasn't that he was a bad person, right? He had pure intentions. I want to make that clear. His intentions and his heart was in it for the right reasons and pure, but he didn't have the discipline around his behavior. And the reality is, is that if you want to be in a good relationship or good with dating, it takes and requires discipline, discipline to follow through with plans, discipline to get your ass out of the office so that you get to the date on time, discipline with taking responsibility for things, discipline with planning dates and going out on dates and not being like, oh, safe. I just want to stay at home. That requires discipline. And if any of you guys haven't heard, I always say about discipline is that you need to focus on the feeling that you will get from doing the thing, not the effort that it requires to do the thing. Because if you focus on the effort it requires, you're not going to want to do the thing. But if you focus on what you're going to get from doing the thing, then you're going to want to do the thing. So what I noticed with him as time went on was, hold on, I need some water. 
was his behavior. Honestly, it was just like laziness. It was, you know, like complaining. It was like, uh, it was just like lack of pursuit after a while. It was honestly laziness. And I was like, well, if this is what he's like two months in, what's he going to be like two years in? You got to always think about that because like when you're two months in, for example, you are in the honeymoon phase. So if you guys can't be on your best behavior and if you guys can't have fun and can't have hot sex two months in, I mean, good fucking luck to you. So that was, that made me start to then ask the question of, huh? Why is he 40 and single? What did happen in his last relationship? Like maybe he did just fall out of love with the woman or maybe she left because he was being lazy. Maybe they did fall out of love, not denying that. But then if he actually wants to be with me or with a woman, he needs to put effort in. And I am not engaging with a guy that's not putting effort in, like full stop. Another example is... um. So I use the example of my friend and yeah, that she was like, then like, oh yeah, this makes total sense. Right. Of like, you know, why is he like 40 and single and he's living in Tulum claims to want to commit a relationship and can't even make it a fucking dinner before the cutoff time. And then his blase and his text messages, like a 40 year old guy, if he does not know or have the confidence, this is key. If he does not know or have the confidence to claim a fucking woman, good luck. If you do not have the confidence as a woman to know what you want in a relationship and you're, if you're 40, good fucking luck. The reality is that as as age goes on, there is an expectation that you know what you want. So if there is a 40 year old guy or a 50 year old guy, and he doesn't have an ounce of self-awareness, you need to reflect on whether you want that or not. Pretty simple. Um, Guys, you need to come to my dating masterclass and the VIP option, like fucking vibes. So the other thing that I want to mention is um, I not going to lie. I get turned on by age. I get turned on by age I get turned on by maturity. I'm also very mature for my age. So I often need a guy much, much older than me. People have always said you need like minimum 35. I'm with a 31 year old, but he is a very old soul. We are like two peas in an absolute fucking pod. 100% twin flames. If you don't know what twin flames are, basically when your soul is conceived, it is split. Some people find the other half to their soul. Some people don't. We believe that we have found the other half to our soul. And key thing, we didn't fucking settle. We didn't settle. We both put in serious self-awareness and commitment and work and all the things that I'm going to be teaching in dating masterclass, we both actually did. And then we found each other in the most perfect of ways. When you guys hear the story about how we met, whenever we tell the story to people, people are just like, oh my fucking God, it's the best story. Anyway, so um, I'm not going to lie that I definitely have like an age thing. And it's not because of like an unhealthy thing. It's because of, I want a guy that can provide for me and protect me and has maturity and knows how to live his life and knows more than me in life and can lead. And generally speaking, age comes with that. So when you have a guy that can't do that and he's 40, you need to run for Z Hills because it's telling you so much about him right? Literally just through behavior. And it's not that he's a bad guy. It's his, it's that someone's behavior tells you a lot about where they are in their life and what they want. And a lot of us do not listen to behavior. We ignore people's behavior and we see what we want to see, right? Super, super important. Um, so what was I going to say? Uh, yeah. So another thing that I wanted to mention, so one of my other situations and I haven't personally been in the situation, but it's a friend, um, that is like, I don't know, he's like in his forties or something real again, really great guy, hard to fucking gold, really wants to find the woman. And I have had instances with him where I have not going to lie, been like, wow, I would not want to be in a relationship with you. Not because he's being mean, not because he's gaslighting, not because he's being lazy, not because he's doing anything wrong, but actually because he is over communicating. So you guys have heard me talk about before that I don't date and I'm not interested in like spiritual dudes, just not here for it. Not here for guys that are obsessed with personal development. Why? Because they can often be like they can often overthink everything and they can often make the littlest things into the deepest fucking conversation 
instead of just being like, that upset me, blow it off next. And I'm very much like, that upset me, don't do it again, fucking next. Like moving on, not that we need to have a three hour long conversation about it and that everything has to be slow and deep and that we have to meditate together every morning and that we both have to do this and like blah 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 I am just like can we just have a human fucking experience the end I'll do my thing you do your thing not interested in us you know fucking eye gazing for 20 hours a day although I will say it is very fucking nice um so in with him for example it's like he has almost overdone like he's overdoing everything. He's overdoing the work, quote unquote, where, um, and he, where he is like complaining about and being up, like being sad that he hasn't found his woman, but he's not actually, cause he thinks he's perfect because he's, you know, all into personal development. And he's not realizing that maybe he's like too into personal development. Maybe it's too intense for women. If women want fun and we want lightheartedness and we want, you know, spontaneity and we want excitement and we want newness and all that kind of thing. Maybe if someone is really fucking intense at us all the time, we find it too much. But again, if you never looked at that and you never taken any self-responsibility because you're like, well, I've done all the work on myself. So like I sh- I'm perfect. Why has any come in? Then, you know, that's kind of, another thing it's really not uncommon I can't uncommon for there to be like guys in like the personal development world or women in the personal development world that are single and 40s 50s whatever and like obviously they're sad about it and I'm like maybe it's you but they won't look at it because they are in the personal development world so they think it's never them because they read all the books do all the things have a clear throat chakra blah 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 And it's like, "Mm, it can still actually be you because sometimes behavior is too intense or sometimes behavior, you can't, you're not reading that the other person is actually made being made really uncomfortable because you're taking a very simple thing and making it really fucking serious. And as a result of the intensity, they're feeling uncomfortable by it. If that makes sense. Um, So in summary, in summary, how old is too old to date? We all have different date rate. Like we, we're all different ages. So that's number one. Number two, the, the real point of the episode is not to give you like a an age number, like how old is too old. That's not what this is about. That's just like a catchy title. What this is actually about is don't think that because of somebody's age, they are a certain person or they are at a certain place in their life or that they are going to behave in a certain way. And then don't get, um, don't fall under a trap and like a spell of their age and then ignore red flags when you are being shown red flags. That is so, so, so important. So I'm going to leave the episode there. I hope that you guys got some juicy fucking chicken nuggets, probably hella trigger, triggered, all for a good reason. I know it's short and sweet, but I'm not going to ramble about nothing. Um, and then I'm going to record another episode so you guys will have another one to listen to. Um, what was I going to say? And I know that in case you guys haven't done this also, there are some really good episodes that are going to be coming out and have recently come out where I have been interviewed on other people's podcasts and I repost them on here. Please don't think that because I'm being interviewed on somebody else that's not as good as just me talking. They're really fucking good. That's why I put them on here because I don't want to have to re-record it because it's that's a waste of my time um so please also go and listen to those interviews because I don't repost interviews where I'm like repeating shit I've already said in other episodes I don't do that I post I post the interviews that I've done where I'm talking about new things and I'm like damn that was so good I need you guys to hear it so please make sure you go and listen to that anyway join the embodiment of dating if you haven't already um it closes on may 16th our call is may 17th and the start of the vip option will start on may 17th as well if you have already got um your space for it and you want to upgrade for vip you absolutely can please note that questions aren't going to be answered on the masterclass um so if you know that you have questions, you want to bring a situation, you want personalized advice, it is absolutely worth the money in getting the VIP. I don't know if I'll do this again. I don't know when I'll do it again. It honestly, 
Like I'm honestly saying that I just don't know. So if you feel like you want to do this, whether you're already in a relationship and you want to re get the polarity back, you want to put a spark back in things or whether you're dating and you want to date, you know, doing the right thing and like making sure that you're not fucking it up for yourself and that you're behaving in the right way, then please make sure that you join the VIP option because you are going to get so much bang for your buck. I absolutely promise and guarantee that. Also, don't forget that the uh, latest issue of the magazine is out unedited. The erotic poem in there from Jamie Rea is so good, um, as well as two articles that I've written. One on is the hookup culture affecting our ability to uh, find the man of our dreams. Other one is about getting back into your feminine after a work day. And then we have another article from Danielle and um, she is talking all about being an influencer Coachella. She was there shooting for Revolve. Really fun, like fashion-y vibe um, article. I've got new summer favorites in there as well as a bunch of other things for you guys to check out. So please make sure you read the mag, share the mag. There's a great prize to win and the content is there. The content in there is different to elsewhere. So it's definitely worth checking out. And it's not like a huge magazine or anything really nice, like Sunday afternoon, thing for you to do with a beautiful cup of cacao. I'm going to leave the episode there. If you haven't left a review, I would really appreciate it. Please share it on your Instagram story and tag me and tag at feminine as fuck um, so that we can reshare it because I appreciate them all. And I will see you guys in the next episode.